Welcome back to HQ Spotlight. We here at CBS Sports HQ have our eye on a few games this weekend. As you take a look at our slate, we're going to point your attention, though, to the number one game on that list. And Ian Eagle, Charles Davis, and Evan Washburn will be on the call as the Ravens visit the Pittsburgh Steelers. There's uh, so much excitement that we're looking for in that one as it kicks off at 1 o'clock. Uh, Lamar Jackson surprisingly enters this game with a 1-3 and three record as the starter against the Steelers, but we know what his offense can look like when it gets rolling. The question is, can Russell Wilson get the Steelers going? And for the answer, we welcome in our Charles Davis, who's going to be guiding us through this one on the call come Sunday. So, Charles, let's start with the Ravens, who have been one of the best teams in the league this season, particularly on offense. Charles, when you look across the board here, Lamar Jackson, Derrick Henry, even Mark Andrews, welcome back to the NFL, my friend. I mean, it's pick your poison when it comes to the Ravens offense. Yeah, you're exactly right, Haley, and that's what they call themselves, the pick your poison offense, because we don't have, I mean, we run out of time when we start talking about players, right? So we haven't even gotten to Zay Flowers in the season that he's having. Already he's got four 100-yard games under his belt. Rashad Bateman, a former number one pick, has been healthy all year long and having the best season of his career. So it just goes on and on. Justice Hill comes off the bench and can run the football and catch out of the backfield. And oh, by the way, they got Keaton Mitchell back. Remember how dynamic he was as a rookie, undrafted free agent out of East Carolina? Could absolutely fly. Hurt his knee last year. Just came back a game ago. And he's only going to get better and add more speed to that offense. So... You name it, they're rolling. And to me, the key with everything, Haley, is when Lamar Jackson doesn't have to run and they're perking down high, that's when you know things are really rolling. A couple games ago, he barely, barely ran the football. When they're doing that and shredding people, look out. This is a Ravens team that's chasing, I believe, 12 NFL records this season alone. So obviously that's something to keep in mind. Oh, by the way, they have the best NFL rush defense this season. They do have a weakness. We're going to get to it in a minute. But uh, deep tease here. Let's just say that weakness maybe bodes well for the quarterback on the other side, Russell Wilson, who has looked so good this season. Mike Tomlin, we hear you. You told us he was pole position and we challenged, but we learned a lesson here. What's been the most impressive part about what Russell Wilson has done since stepping in as the starter in Pittsburgh? Haley, I think it's having been around that team now with him as the starting quarterback and also having been around that team when Justin Fields was the starting quarterback. And the vibes were good when Justin Fields was a starter. But with Russell Wilson, they're different. I mean, we had Najee Harris tell us before the game last week about the confidence that Russ gives the entire team and how they feel elevated with him at the helm and the confidence they have in him as their leader, which is something you probably... And we haven't really heard in the last few years with Russell. Denver didn't work out quite the way it wanted to. You know, he wanted it to. His second year there, I think it got obscured that he had a good season. But his head coach didn't want him to be his quarterback. So when you don't have that, in this case, Mike Tomlin wanted him to be the quarterback. This team loves him as their quarterback. And by the way, when he throws the ball downfield, he understands I can throw to big targets. They can go up and make big plays, and this offense moves. Just think about it, Haley. Since he's been the starting quarterback, they're averaging over 30 points per game. Remember when it was a struggle for them to get 30 points in two games? Yeah. They're not having that struggle now. Russell Wilson has really, really taken off with this offense. And this offense is taking off with him. You mentioned the big plays. I have George Pickens on my fantasy team, so I've loved this shift personally for myself. I've benefited from that as well, but you mentioned it. Pittsburgh is 3-0, averaging 30.3 points per game with Russ as the starter. So then let's go back to that Baltimore weakness, right? Why did I bring that up, Charles? Well, the Ravens' pass defense is egregious. I think we can say that. The worst in the NFL. They're giving up nearly 300 yards a game. So based on everything you just told us about the big play opportunity for Russell Wilson, how does this Baltimore defense fare when he is the quarterback this weekend? That's going to be the question of the weekend for us. On Sunday, we're going to be there to examine it because we keep waiting for this Ravens defense to resemble the Ravens defense we've seen how many years past. What's the phrase in their place? play like a Raven. Well, they're not playing like a Raven as a cohesive defense. Here's what I'm seeing. I'm seeing guys who can rush the passer. Nnamdi Matabike, you know, the key guy. Kyle Van Noy was giving them some good pass rush early. But they're not getting home or having enough pressure on the quarterback to take the pressure off of the secondary. And they're not getting great play on the back end, especially at the safety position. Marcus Williams is supposed to be one of their better players. He got benched for a game. 
All right, they brought in Eddie Jackson, who's been one of the key ball hawks in his career in Chicago and coming over here to Baltimore. He had an abysmal game against Cleveland in the one loss they've had in recent weeks. So they're struggling on that back end, which means the middle of the field, right? So if you're Pittsburgh, George Pickens has really been running the slant route at a high level. So you'll be happy with that with your fantasy league. Mike Williams is now going to get more opportunities to play jump ball on the outside. You can work inside with Calvin Austin. But the big thing is they've got to get Pat Fryer moved to tight end going. And where do tight ends like to work? Middle of the field. This is going to be a fun matchup to watch to see how they attack the middle of Baltimore's defense and see if Baltimore has any answers this week to try and close things down. And I know, Charles, that the microscope for the Steelers has been on the offense, specifically with that quarterback competition that we saw with Russ being injured. But the defense, dare I say, kind of looking like the vintage steel curtain of years past. I know that's high praise, so I don't want to give that out just now. But Cam Hayward is looking like an all pro. TJ Watt is the guy you want on your defense when you need a big play. When it comes to those guys specifically, how have they elevated this Steelers defense and kept them in a season where, again, that offense was a question mark coming in? Well, I'll start with the two that you mentioned, Haley, because I think you identified the guys that really lead this defense. Cam Hayward had injuries last year, didn't play to the level he was used to playing. People were wondering if it was kind of over at the age of 35. And the big man said, I want to end my career as a Steeler. I want to be a one jersey guy. They got the contract done. And he's back healthy and wreaking havoc. Had two sacks last week against Washington. He's creating rubble in the run game and, of course, affecting the pass game. T.J. Watt, if you look at last week, you didn't know if he even played because the statistics don't tell you that. But if you turned on the tape and watched the game, there were holding calls that didn't get called against him, right, that he created plays that way. He's still creating pressure. And when the game's on the line, he's going to figure into it in a big way. And he did that in the game against Washington, creating heat on Jaden Daniels. But where the Steelers' defense is really starting to come along is a free agent acquisition who came from Baltimore named Patrick Queen in the middle of the defense. And many wondered if without Roquan Smith, is Patrick Queen the same player? Because Roquan took a lot of pressure off of him in Baltimore and let Patrick be a run, chase, hit guy. Now he's got to take on some things, be that leader in the middle, and do a little bit more. A little bit of a slow start in Pittsburgh, but in the last few weeks, he's really elevated and become that free agent acquisition that they dreamed of. The second team all pro last year, he's all over the place in the middle of the field and starting to make those types of plays. T.J. Watt, by the way, 16 career sacks against the Ravens, so keep your eye on there. Really quick here, Charles, we only got a few minutes, but uh, the kicker spot has been quite strange this season. Does this game come down to kickers, you think? It, it typically does because seven out of the last eight, Pittsburgh has won, and all these games have been seven points or less, so kickers will figure into it. And this is one of the few times that we've ever talked about Justin Tucker not providing a decided advantage for his team as the number one kicker. He's had a little bit of a bumpy road. I don't expect that to continue. He's been a 90% kicker his entire career. He's going to be back on the beam. But don't underestimate Chris Boswell, the AFC Special Teams Player of the Month for September and October. One missed kick for the year, and that was from 61 yards. All right? So these guys now may come down and decide the game. As many AFC North games come down to We'll have to see what happens. We always know these games are so gritty. Charles, we can't wait to hear your call this Sunday. Enjoy the game, and we look forward to it. Here's our full NFL on CBS Sunday slate. Of course, it starts with that game. Steelers at Ravens, 1 o'clock. I know a lot of people are looking down in the 425 window, though, because that's where we get really a should be a Super Bowl. Chiefs, Bills uh, should be a good one this week. 11 slate.